What's up everyone, John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here with a full review for you of the recently unboxed Motorola Bravo for AT&T Wireless. Let's go ahead and get started. So before I get into the features of the phone, let's talk first about call quality. No matter what the phone can do or not do, if it's not going to make good phone calls, it's not going to be much use to you. So generally when I test phones, I will do a 20 call test from various regions where I am in Southern California of each call in two minutes in length to test signal strength, call quality, and any sort of dropped calls that we might have. So in my 20 call test, I actually had two dropped calls with this. And I found signal strength to be about medium to acceptable. Uh, with other AT&T phones, I've generally been able to pull in about three to four bars of 3G. Uh, this was pulling in just about two to three, uh, so about a bar less. Now certainly the bars uh, rely on proprietary algorithms and aren't necessarily the most accurate reflection of signal strength, but those two drop calls are generally about two more than I've usually had in other tests. Uh, I didn't have any sort of death grip type issues, didn't lose reception when being held. Call quality was very good. I had no white noise on my end. The caller had no white noise on their end. From a speakerphone standpoint, it was a little bit tinny and a tad bit quiet. So if we rely on speakerphone to use while you're in a car or any sort of loud environment, uh, this may not be the phone for you. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the phone itself. Let's run through a bit of the specs very quickly, and then I will talk about what the phone can do to give you some perspective uh, on the device. So it is an AT&T phone. It's going to set you back about $129 on a two-year contract. It's got a 3.7-inch diagonal screen. It's an LCD display with a resolution of 480 by 854, so relatively decent resolution. Uh, it's got over a 1,500 mAh hour battery, so you're going to get well over seven hours of talk time, and battery life is actually fantastic. Uh, on this device, I was easily able to get through a day, and I'm a very heavy user. Uh, I use email, browsing, and sort of everything else that a smartphone can do, uh, and generally I push it very hard that I don't get through a full day. Not a problem with the Bravo. Uh, it is running Android 2.1 with Motorola's uh, Moto Blur sitting on top of it, and it's an older version of Motor, Moto Blur, uh, that has sort of those colored icons. We'll talk about Moto Blur a bit more in a minute. Uh, it's got a TI OMAP 800 megahertz processor. Now in this world of fast processors and thinking of Snapdragon and gigahertz, uh, you might think the 800 is gonna make this thing a bit anemic. Uh, actually, it's very, very, very quick, and I'm gonna show you that uh, in just a few minutes. Uh, it's being assisted by 512 megabytes of RAM. Uh, it's got a two gig micro SD card included. It's got a three megapixel camera on the back, which can take standard definition video, uh, no HD recording here and this can do a uh, flash content with a flash light. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the phone. The first thing I noticed when I unboxed this guy and picked it up was its very thin form factor. Uh, the thing is very, very, very uh, svelte, if you will, uh, and it's very light and has a really nice feel uh, in the hand. It's got that soft touch rubber in the back, which makes it sort of a nice grip to it. Uh, from a form factor standpoint, I really liked the phone. Uh, it felt good, it was light in the pocket, wasn't taking up that much space, and 3.7 inch screen really gave a lot of screen real estate. Uh, generally, I've lamented about capacitive buttons on the bottom. Uh, these were actually very responsive. They're the modal blur uh, array of buttons, so this is gonna be your menu, your home, and your back. There is not a search button, though, uh, like we have on the majority of other Android devices, unfortunately. So something to keep in mind if you use the search button. I did use that quite a bit and I was certainly uh, missing it. So with Moto Blur, you're gonna get a ton of widgets. I am not the biggest fan of Moto Blur. I try and sort of turn off a lot of the widgets, uh, but it can do a lot of things. It's a cloud syncing service. It's gonna sort of bring in and supposedly amalgamate all of your social media and all of your contacts, sort of put it all into uh, one place and upload it to Motorola servers. So if you ever change phones, you log into your Moto Blur account, everything will be there. Uh, essentially, it's a lot of sort of widget base. You can see that familiar Moto Blur, um, icons at the bottom to show you what screen you're on. I'll show you what the widgets are here very quickly, uh, the Motorola widgets. I'm not the biggest fan, but there are some of them are useful. The calendar widgets are pretty nice, the weather widgets, all the social networking, and the sort of Wi-Fi toggle switches. Nothing revolutionary here. It's sort of standard Android stuff, but you just get a bit more functionality, I suppose, uh, with Moto Blur. So one of the things that I really wanted to talk about, uh, and I mentioned this sort of earlier and touched on it, was there's a lot of talk about processor speed and whether or not that's gonna translate to a better experience. Uh, and I found that faster processor, if it's not optimized for uh, the software, isn't going to result in a faster experience. 
So let me show you what this TI uh, OMAP 800 megahertz processor can do. I'm actually going to start doing this with all of my Android devices. It gives you a sense of uh, its prowess. So we're going to use something called a quadrant here. Essentially, it's going to benchmark the phone. And I'm going to do this live. You can see what the full benchmark is going to be on the phone. And while it's running, uh, I'll talk about some other features here. We'll go ahead and run the full benchmark. So it's going to test for CPU, memory. It's going to test 2D graphics and 3D graphics. Uh, to see what it can do. So if you want to play 3D games or 2D games, uh, you want a phone that's going to be able to handle this as well as handling a pretty decent amount of multitasking. So this guy will run in the background. I'll talk a bit more uh, about the phone. So I'm a big fan of the Android stock keyboard. I've talked about it in all my Android reviews. Uh, the keyboard that comes just with Android. Uh, I haven't enjoyed necessarily that much uh, the modal blur keyboard that's sort of sitting on top of this. So I've actually transitioned back to using uh, the standard Android keyboard. Uh, this does not have a slide out QWERTY uh, keyboard, so you're going to be relying solely on the screen uh, for text entry. Something to keep in mind. I definitely recommend trying this keyboard first. You can see it now, so we're running through some cool looking 3D benchmarks. Uh, and it's doing a very nice job. It's pretty smooth here. Uh, I've seen this on other devices. Uh, some of them even with faster processors. I can't quite handle this 3D uh, graphics test with uh, this much alacrity. So it's doing a bit more here. We got some globe spinning. I did want to do this sort of live on camera. Uh, so you guys can see that the results weren't uh, fidgeted with and, uh, and messed with at all. So it's doing sort of a DNA uh, sequence here. And we are just about done. So it's going to send the results here and we'll see how it stacks up against uh, some other uh, Android devices. And this I found uh, very, very telling. So there was a, close that. All right, so unfortunately, uh, it did not show what that speed was there. We're going to go ahead and run this test one more time, uh, and I'll cut back to uh, the results. You don't have to watch it again. All right, so here is the final benchmark score of the Motorola Bravo, and the results might surprise you. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit more so you can sort of see where we stand. Uh, certainly, uh, once this is updated to Android 2.2, uh, we should see some even increased speeds. Motorola has said a 2.2 update will be coming. So let's look at uh, the bottom here and uh, see where we stand. So if you look, we've got the original Motorola Droid, Sony Xperia X10, working our way up from the bottom, HTC Desire. There's the Nexus One, Samsung Galaxy S, Moto Droid X. There's the Bravo, Evo with 2.2, which is pretty impressive. Uh, Motorola Droid X with 2.2, and then the Motorola Droid 2. Uh, sort of leading this charge. We can see that out of all these phones here, uh, we're looking at the fourth best of these phones that are being tested, and those are a lot of uh, Android devices, which is pretty impressive. Uh, score there of just over 1,100. I'm going to be doing this test on, again, uh, on all Android phones. I think it's very telling to see how well uh, the processor and the software uh, work together. All right, so let's go ahead and check out the browser. Uh, this is, of course, multi-touch, and I mentioned that it can do flash. So go ahead, and of course, it's got an accelerometer. We'll jump into uh, Techno Buffalo here and show you what that looks like. So we'll do a real quick search. You can see that keyboard I was mentioning earlier. Uh, of course, it rotates uh, as well, but not the biggest fan of the Moto Blur keyboard. Just something to uh, keep in mind. So we'll go ahead and do a quick search here, Techno Buffalo, and uh, we'll let this load. And there's a bit of flash content here, so you can see the speed of flash. Using uh, the flash light, not like you want to light up a, a room, but it's actually called flash light. Uh, it's not Flash 10.1, we can get on Android 2.2. Uh, it does work pretty well. It is going to be a bit of a battery drain, and your uh, pinch and zooming isn't going to be as smooth. You can turn it off if you want to not have the flash content, have improved battery life, and have a bit smoother pinch to zoom. Uh, on other Android 2.1 devices that I've tested, especially on the Techno Buffalo website, uh, the pinch to zoom with the flash turned on has not been very smooth. However, I was very impressed with it here. Uh, on the Motorola Bravo. Uh, this phone is much faster than I expected it to be. When I first tested this, I thought it was going to be mostly a, a mid-range device uh, with moderate performance. It turns out it offers performance uh, comparable of the flagship devices, uh, with the one exception being its very anemic uh, three megapixel camera. So something to, uh, to keep in mind here. Let's go ahead and uh, jump out. So in conclusion, the Motorola Bravo really did surprise me uh, from a feature and performance standpoint. Uh, I was really uh, blown away by what the device can do. I think it represents a really nice uh, sort of mid to high range uh, smartphone for, uh, for AT&T. Now you saw this got a higher ranking than the Galaxy S uh, phone. If you're sort of looking at this uh, versus the Galaxy S, the Galaxy S is going to offer probably a better, uh, better uh, package of features with that super AMOLED screen. Uh, however, if you don't want the Galaxy S and you're looking for something a bit different, 
uh, perhaps a different form factor, maybe a bit smaller screen here uh, with the 3.7 inch screen. Now Bravo is going to be a really fantastic phone. Uh, on a 1 to 5 scale, uh, I give it a very strong 4. Uh, losing out on that 1.4, like I mentioned, it's a very weak camera and that dropped call and speakerphone quality that I experienced uh, earlier. I mentioned in the beginning part of this video. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, review of the Motorola Bravo. Uh, for all your smartphone news, be sure to check out technobuffalo.com. And for exclusive content, uh, check me out at Twitter, twitter.com slash john 4 lakers Links to those will all be down below. I'm John Rettinger. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.